an interesting trial presented at ASCO 2021 in the oral metastatic breast cancer session was a study from China of trastuzumab plus endocrine therapy or chemotherapy as first-line treatment for MBC. This was for patients with HR positive and HER2 positive breast cancer, and it was a randomized trial. This study enrolled uh, adult patients who had HR positive, HER2 positive breast cancer and a disease-free interval of greater than 20 months. It was a one-to-one -one randomization to endocrine therapy, which could have been a CIRM or an AI plus trastuzumab, or chemotherapy, which could have been taxane, capecitabine, or vinorelbine plus uh, trastuzumab. Many of these patients, interestingly, had not had adjuvant endocrine therapy, and most of them, about two-thirds, had had prior chemotherapy. But there were about a quarter of patients who had de novo HR-positive, HER2-positive disease. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival. The study was designed as a non-inferiority trial. And although the uh, data was not presented at, within the non-inferiority limits, the hazard ratio was 0 0.88, favoring the endocrine therapy group, which was not statistically significant. The overall survival, uh, again, was slightly better for the endocrine therapy group compared to the chemotherapy group uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.82. Should be mentioned that the PFS in this uh, study for patients that received trastuzumab alone as their anti-HER2 therapy ranged from around 12 months to 15 months. And the overall survival was, uh, the median was right around um, 30 months. And these results compare a little bit less favorably to those from the Cleopatra study, which was the large randomized global trial that looked at pertuzumab and trastuzumab plus chemotherapy in the form of uh, single agent taxane um, compared to uh, uh, trastuzumab alone and showed uh, overall survival benefit with almost five years of uh, median survival in that group. In the Chinese study, uh, all subgroups benefited with the possible exception, all study groups benefited of endocrine therapy uh, at least equal or better than chemotherapy with the exception of patients who had a disease-free interval of less than 24 months where it appeared that chemotherapy might be better in that group. This was uh, a subgroup analysis. Uh, as expected, the adverse events were uh, less severe in the endocrine therapy group with almost no grade three toxicity, whereas as expected in chemotherapy, uh, there was more uh, leukopenia, more nausea and vomiting, more hand-foot syndrome for patients who got capecitabine, and more alopecia. So the investigators concluded that endocrine therapy plus trastuzumab um, could be a potential option for patients that were HR positive, HER2 positive. And I think many of us agree with this, with the caveat that this study did not test the addition of pertuzumab, which is now the standard of care. The study was launched uh, before pertuzumab became available in China, actually completed enrollment before pertuzumab became uh, available in China. So it was uh, certainly an ethical design uh, at the time the study was performed. I do think there are a group of patients with uh, HR positive, HER2 positive disease, particularly those that are phenotypically more like uh, endocrine positive patients with long disease free interval and those that have predominantly soft tissue and bone disease who are potentially good candidates uh, for this approach, particularly older patients who you might be able to spare in the first line, uh, the side effects of chemotherapy. So this study adds, gives some additional weight to that concept. Mm -hmm.